During the remainder of William III's reign and that of his daughter, Queen Anne, Great Britain battled with the might of Louis XIV's France and her allies. The Nine Years' War and the War of the Spanish Succession produced in John Churchill, Duke of Marlborough, a soldier of genius, who made Englishmen virtually the masters in Europe. But these hostilities had also produced an official national debt, and a new breed of professional men, the bankers, appeared. When poor Queen Anne died, and the Stuarts were superseded by the German House of Hanover, good Protestants all, investment, government annuities, and the new Bank of England were the rage. <laughs> Shot, I and hang. <laughs> and yet he has a gift, sir. Grant him his gift. I'll give him a gift. I'll give him the note. But who is this Alexander Pope? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Come in. Pope, my dear, is a bard, a poet. Oh, I knew a poet once. <laughs> well, several times. Oh, oh, Pope's <laughs> an infernal poxy ballamanger. <laughs> Who stung the Lord in verse? Oh, well, <laughs> that he has. Pope. Has a brain. Uh, Mr. Walters. Do not should... interrupt our pregnant pauses, sir. Now, Robert, Robert, own that my brains are strong as Pope's. Yours will outlast him, sir, for yours is pickled. <laughs> <laughs> but have you seen him? Have you seen him? Why? Is he handsome? Well, if you'd seen him, my dear, you'd never read him. Oh. He is like so. <laughs> <laughs> you do him justice, sir. Uh, Mr. Walpole, please. Who's this? Oh, some nobody grown fat on stocks and shares. <laughs> I, I, I should like to thank you, sir, for a most delightful evening, Mr. Walpole. You are uh, William Harcourt, sir. Oh, so you're Harcourt? Yes. Good. A merchant, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. And a great admirer of yours. I, I tell my wife you're the greatest master of finance in this or any other time, sir. You flatter me, Harcourt. What do you want? Nothing, sir. Only advice. Uh, I bought some shares uh, in the South Sea Company. Uh, and so have I, sir. But that does not make us partners. So I was wise to buy. To everything there is a season, Harcourt. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to buy and a time to sell. What time is it now? Time for us to say good night, Harcourt. <laughs> yes, I'll take my leave. My, my wife lies sick at Southwark. Best hurry, Harcourt. A woman in bed is a woman in danger, and Southwark is famous for the parks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Tom Mackenzie? I must ask you to stand aside, sir. No, all I want is your answer. Do you know of Tom Mackenzie? I have a wife, sir. I have children. I have a... I saw. But spare me, sir. I'll give you all I have. I asked you a civil question. Do you know of Tom Mackenzie? I've never heard of the gentleman, sir. Then you shut up. You ignorant savage. 
You've heard maybe of Isaac Newton, the science man. And you've heard of John Law, the Merlin of international finance. Oh, oh hi, hi, hi. You've heard too maybe of Galileo, Archimedes. Well, Tom Mackenzie is the son and heir to their genius. At the age of three, he could calculate the number of hairs on his mother's head, multiply them by the population of the Highlands, and divide them by the national debt. The sum was done in here. <laughs> See? <laughs> At five, while his contemporaries bowled hoops, young Tom took Euclid's theories as his playthings. A mathematical prodigy, said the minister. And for once, the minister didn't lie. At 12, they sent young Tom to St. Andrew's University, where they taught him the little they knew and packed him off to Edinburgh, where he sucked the professors and libraries dry. And by 17, young Tom's brain was a swirling, exploding universe of equations, projections, formulae, algebraic mosaics, geometrical mazes, and monstrous mathematical monoliths. By day, as he wandered the streets, unable to talk to normal folk, he totted up each step he took, calculated the number of stones in each building he passed, and instantly recorded the exact speed of every pedestrian and coach. And by night, by night, he swam through an ocean of numberless fish, and all the fish were numbers. See, the gift had become a curse. Hey! Huh? Until young Tom found a haven for his hardly barley head. Jesus Christ. John Barleycorn. And so a donation, if you please, for Tom Mackenzie's whiskey fund. Wasn't his story worth it? Take it, sir. Ah. And, and let me pass. Well, gold's a pretty toy. What's the bulge in your coat? Just papers. Ha! It's just paper, eh? <laughs> Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Know all men by these present. Principal stock of the governor and company of merchants of Great Britain trading to... to the South Seas and other parts of America for encouraging the fishery. <laughs> Why, here's a catch. A hundred pounds of shares in the South Sea Company. That is worth 900 pounds in change alley tomorrow. Just people, eh? Just how we fortune. I love you, mother. I love you, father, too. I love you, wife. I love you, children. There's only one I love better than you. My lady money. Ever since first I saw my lady money. 
I knew that I would always adore my lady Mani. Though she sometimes throws me out her door, my lady Mani. Is my favorite. Oh. Hush, sir. Can't you see we're trying to balance our books? Oh. They shall balance. Never fear, Mrs. Trundle, no matter how beautiful it ain't been cooked. I can't find the invoice for the water you serve in your gin, Charlie Squake. I am sure you can blind yourself as soon on the gin in this tavern as any other in Suffolk. But I meant no harm, Mrs. Trundle. For you're the most honest board between here and the pillory. My friends, if you must quarrel, I must depart. I have no appetite for a glorious battle between Mrs. Trundle's ladies and a clientele of Mr. Scrape's tavern. There be no war between the oars and the sots while Jack Glass is it to keep the peace. Right, you yeah. are. Right. Right. With you, Jack, keep the peace there. We need your keen eye to sort out these money matters, Mr. Stickle, for you're the sharpest fence in London. Ain't he, lads? Uh, <laughs> sharp as a razor. He is too damn sharp. Pawnbroker, please, Mr. Plaster. The fence, I believe, is one who knowingly receives stolen goods for cash. <laughs> and you don't know because you don't ask no questions, right, Stickle? <laughs> <laughs> Here, let's back to the books. Here. How come you charge the syndicate £25 four times for rest periods for your orders? Uh, well, what are these rest periods? It's a hazard of the profession, as Mr Scrape should know, that a lady of the town sometimes finds herself with child. And I think it only right that her protectors should grant her a three months lining. At £25 a time? Diet and lodging at £1 a week, £12. A nurse for the month and the use of linen, £2. A minister for the christening, two pound the christening supper three pound and for the disposal of the child another five and one pound for the serving maid 25 pounds sir oh, uh, should the syndicate pay for the laying in of oars why sir we pay off our fees to mrs trundle and i pay half of that into the general fund so the syndicate takes a quarter yes. more than enough that's fair virgin yeah. maggie a quarter's yeah. fair Aye, we pay a quarter of our take, don't we, Charlie? We do. Well, um, no, no. I propose that the syndicate, since it takes a quarter, uh, should remit one quarter, one quarter only for the lining money, the uh, five pounds. Why, that ain't even a quarter. Uh, I discard the two pounds for christening and three pounds for supper. We are not a church or charity. Yes. Jack Plaster, are yeah. these your accounts for 1719? Right. Yeah. Left-hand column. Usually, you'll find the prices raised for articles lifted. Gold watches, handkerchiefs, etc., etc. And you can check them all against Mr. Stickle's books, because we sold them all through him. Ah, but what about the straightforward thefts of money, Jack? On the pages, headed by the word top. And most expenses you'll find on the right-hand column. A bribe to spring a mate from Newgate, Christmas presents for the watchman, and so on. And are we to quarter Jack's expenses? Well, <laughs> that would be just. <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Plaster? Well, it weren't agreed. But if all the others quarter theirs. Ah, you're a fair man, Jack. Don't flatter me, man. Yeah, you're all masters of your respective trades, but I'm foxed by your arithmetic. To sort the fact from fiction here would take me months. We need a genius at numbering to rescue us. Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. Can I be of some assistance? We don't like strangers. We don't uh, like boxy Scots. Eavesdropping, will you be, dear? What? You'll be lucky to reach I... that door with your tongue still hanging in your mouth. I am offering you yeah. the use of the finest mathematical calculating instrument in the world. My brain. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it! Oh. Can you write fast? Huh? Oh! Well, indulge me in a game, which shall be proof. Each of you, call out an item and a number. Say, 40,054 hogsheads of whiskey. You write them down, and I shall add them in my head. Absurd. Try me. And 202 quarts of gin. 497 yards of Brussels lace made in Birmingham. 18,454 <laughs> Romish priests in a bed.
bedroom cupboard. <laughs> Parliament men tumbling each other. Same day's trenchmen. 869,443 bleeding throats. Whoa. 326 wicked fingers. 144 purple periwigs. 7,777 golden guineas. And I retire from the game. <laughs> Eleven and a quarter lawyers in Bedlam. Two spine scotch eyes burned out with a poker. 872 strokes of the birch. That's 961,515 and a quarter. Multiply by 54. 51,921,823 and a half. Take away 101. 51,921,722 and a half. Divide by 10. 5,192,172 and a quarter. Enough! I'm lost! Your health. When one dog meets another. They take time making friends. They circle round each other and sniff each other's ends. But when man meets a stranger, he can never tell if the scent of the other means danger. For man, though he stinks, has no sense of smell. What was the fourth item from the last? 7,777 golden guineas, and she'll retire from the game. And before that? 144 purple periwigs, 326 wicked fingers, though I think the lady underestimates. 869,443 bleeding throats, 10 dead Frenchmen, 777 parliament men tumbling each other, 80,454 Romish priests in the bedroom. Come on! Yes, yes, that's enough! We have the man we lack. Marvel. Prodigy. Why, he could save us all this paperwork and ensure fair dealing in our syndicate. He ain't in your pocket, is he, Stickle? If I'd known of him, I'd have kept him to myself. <laughs> save all our paperwork, would he? Allow me, uh, masters. Mm, there's an error there. There is another there. What is... Now, that doesn't tally. Nor does that. Ye gods, how can you work together? You can't even do arithmetic. Ho, ho, ho. You'll uh, take a whiskey with us, sir. Oh, uh, join me and welcome. You see our problem, sir? I begin to. We are all of some consequence here in Southwark. I as a landlord, and Mrs. Trundle as a madam, mm -hmm. Mr. Plaster as the leader of a formidable gang of rogues, oh. and Mr. Stickley here as... Pawnbroker. Oh, yes. yes. A year ago, we decided to pool our interests and form this syndicate to share our profits and act together. Partly to smooth out the ups and downs of our several businesses, partly to eliminate unfair competition in the borough. We've done that all right. But as you can see, you are numerically illiterate. You are men and women of action, and that I can admire. But you are as ill-organized as an African jungle. Would you help us then, sir, to right ourselves? Oh, <laughs> well, then. Uh, maybe, maybe. Tell me, uh, what name is your company registered under? Registered? Are we registered? No, no, never. You mean you operate outside the law? How else could we do an honest day's work? <laughs> well, if you'd like to know, play call at my rooms. Ten in the morning, Monday week. I'll uh, scribble my address. Till then, I will be occupied. with my own affairs. I hope to see you, friends, Monday week. Good day to you, gentle ladies and sir. He's shabby for a genius. Oh, your geniuses are always shabby. They're above such fripperies. <laughs> oh, good morning to you, Dolly. That's as my way. Here. Here, wake up, you. There's the scoundrel. Here. 
We'd be wasting our whole night for you. No admission here, sir. No admission. Five guineas. Where's our five guineas? I wish to retire to my room kindly. Your to... room? You ain't paid no rent. You've got no rights here. Eviction, sir, is the word. Eviction. No rent, no room. I'm a fair man. Then allow me to pass to pack my bags. Your bags. We sold your nasty bags. They never fetched a guinea. <laughs> Stop eavesdropping, Dolly. Back to your work, you slack. Yes, Mrs. Baxter. Sold my bags. You're a hasty man, Mr. Baxter. Hasty? Two months we waited. Five guineas. Five guineas. Oh, yes, five guineas. It must have slipped my mind. Accompany me upstairs. You shall be paid. Paid in what? You shall be paid. Paid from a pocket full of promises, I suppose. One, two, three, four, five. What shall we subtract for the bag? Oh, they were only pawns, sir. I could get them back. Oh, don't trouble yourself. Since my ships come in, I don't intend to handle such shabby goods. Uh -huh. Shall we say one guinea for the bags? Oh. And now I must be off to Chelsea for new lodging. Oh, no call, no call for that, sir. Why, well, you're welcome here, ain't you, oh, Matilda? well, of course, sir. You must forgive us, sir, but we are poor folk. We have to count the pennies. Yeah, they, they tell me Chelsea air's not healthy, sir. Much better stay in Southwark. Without offence, Baxter, since my legacies come through, I must find rooms more suited to my station. Oh, oh so we can improve? Oh, Dolly, where is that slap? This room ain't been swept this last month, I swear. Dolly! This district is convenient for my business, it's true. Oh, it's most excellent for business, sir. Then, Baxter, if you will assist me in the redecoration of the rooms, then I'll gladly bear the expense. No trouble, sir. Then here is a list of the furnishings I need, carpets, curtains, etc. Mrs. Baxter? Um, sir? Please send a coach to this address, fetch the tailor. Have him send his best selection of materials. Savile Row? Excuse me, Mr. Mackenzie, but ain't you overreaching yourself? Your purse is limited, I take it. Shares in the South Sea Company. I fancy any tradesman will give me credit against that. The South Sea Company? Oh, no idea. Well... Come, Matilda. <laughs> we'll see to your orders right away, Mr. Mackenzie. Please to send Dolly up to clean. Oh, well, of course, sir. Dolly! From all those folk who do not have, it shall be grabbed away. But those who have are granted more. That's what the Gospels say. But I would add what I believe, though I have never read it, to those who only seem to have, is granted endless credit. You, Mr. Mackenzie. Hmm. Can I teach you a game, Dolly? It's a game we play in Scotland. I don't know, sir. What's it called? Hunt the guinea. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> Ten o'clock in the morning. I hope the lad's got a serious proposition to make. If not, I'll soon make him serious. May I inquire your names and businesses? 
didn't you used to be Dolly Mason, spinster of this parish? You've grown quite grand, ain't we, Dolly? If you please, sir, I will inform Mr. Mackenzie of your arrival. Welcome. Be seated, be seated. Um, you, uh, you have a proposition, sir. Several. Make your move. Now, your several businesses are already loosely combined. Loosely is the word. Hear him out. But they operate under the shadow of Newgate Jail and the gallows. Bluntly said. Now, I propose that your syndicate should be formally registered as a limited liability company. Is that possible? Oh, certainly. Registration is a formality. It's won by a small fee and an air of respectability. Where's the advantage, sir? As a company, you can vastly increase your capital and thus extend your activities. Ah, uh, so? by issuing stocks and shares. Now you, as salaried directors of the company, go to the public with a prospectus. That is, a series of financially rewarding schemes. Now those who buy shares will take part in the profits. What? Eventually, eventually. And then, only such profits as the directors may decide. Now such uh, doles to shareholders are called dividends. And when the dividends are high, then the shares may be resold at a great profit. Well, how can that help us? Why, as directors, we shall all hold a great many shares. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Mr. Mackenzie, th this is a sweet sounding scheme. And I know that the fashionable town is in a fever of fortune making through the South Sea Company and other products, but uh, why should the financiers of London trust us? Oh, I don't intend that we should go to the city to seek our investors. Southwark is our territory. A mean territory. Patience. While the South Sea Company and the like chase after the gold of the rich with hundreds of pounds to wager, we will fish for the silver and coppers of our Southwark neighbours. Shares for a shilling, a new opportunity for the people, new prospects, a new future. And most attractive of all, a new form of gambling. But uh, what on earth will they imagine they are gambling on? Why, the success of Universal Improvements Limited. Who's that? Ourselves. A combination of Mr. Stickle's Fair Trading Centre, Mr. Scrape's Hotel at the Black Bull, Mrs. Trundle's Aphrodite Club for Gentlemen, and Mr. Plaster's Security Agency for the Protection of Citizens Against the Depredations of the Lawless to which we will add many fine projects. Now, I have here the forms for registration. Will you sign? Uh, well, I'll sign. I'll sign. I'll sign. I'll sign. A moment, uh, uh, what personal capital have you? 100 pounds of South Sea stock. Oh. That's worth near a thousand pounds of this morning's prizes. Thousand pounds. Oh, let's sign. A toast. Universal improvements. Universal, Universal improvements. improvements. But how are the people to know of our company? Why we will lay these and other schemes before them here in Southwark at a public meeting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Three more tickets to draw this morning, sirs. Three. 
three more chances at the grand thousand pound prize. <laughs> Number 5,084. A blank. Yeah. Oh, blank. Number 7,042. A blank. Oh, no, 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 no. I reckon there's someone in those wheels. Give us our what tickets he pleases. Aye, oh, sometimes there's 20 blanks drawn together, then two or three prizes. Number 2063. Here. Yeah. Stand clear, stand clear. That's my ticket. Go on, 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 one of the fifties. I'm afraid, sir, it's a blank. He says it's a blank. It can't be. Oh, 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 Since you have been so patient and fortune has been meagre here today, what say you, Mr. Gudgeon, shall have twenty-five pounds by way of consolation? Fifty! Yeah, yeah. Fifty! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the judges, sir. There's fifty pounds. <laughs> the next draw will be this afternoon. Tickets obtainable in this hall. In the meantime, I'm proud to announce a public meeting of special interest to all the citizens of Southwark. And may I present the Honourable Directors of Universal Improvements Limited. As uh, Chairman of Universal Improvements Limited, I'm delighted to introduce my fellow members of the board. It's so stickle. Stickle the fence, three balls, stickle. Is <laughs> <laughs> so, one your fortunes made for you? Yeah. 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 Then let us proceed. Our directors, Charles Scrape Esquire. A quarter gin flute, Charlie. <laughs> Mrs. Jasmine Trundle. Yeah. 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 Mr. Jonathan Plaster. Thug of this parish. <laughs> And two new recruits to our board, the very Reverend Samuel Cheshire of St. Albans. And Lord Grebel of Redoubt. Highly privileged, highly privileged. I. Uh, and lastly, <laughs> our company's secretary and treasurer, Mr. Thomas McKenzie of St. Andrews and Edinburgh Universities. Brothers, and uh, I believe I may call you so, for you are gamblers, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've been a gambler too, but I found a better way than gaming. And I'm here today to tell you about a lottery in which there are no blank tickets. Oh. <laughs> it is a game, it is a game which everyone who dares to play must win. Now bear with me, brothers, bear with me, and I will show you not one hazardous road to wealth, but a multitude of safe highways along whose verges Great fortunes drop for the taking, like apples in October. <laughs> so far, I've outlined only a few of our local plans, which, within a few years, will convert our borough of Southwark from a morass of poverty into a gleaming El Dorado. Now, <laughs> universal improvements. Is not limited by borough boundaries, no, my friends. To your profit, we shall scour the world. Now, I cannot reveal all of our plans for you today. Why not? Because, because at least one member of this audience is a spy. 
in the pay of one of our unscrupulous rivals. However, I will outline a few of our plans as, item, the acquisition from the savages of Africa at the cost of a few hundred beads of a 10,000 acre elephant farm which could provide two steaks a week for every citizen of London for life. Uh, Item, the production of a tested bed which contains its own form of heating. Uh, Item, a proven cure for the gout. Item, a battle gun which can fire 300 rounds within two minutes before it is reloaded. Item, the founding of a refined house of assignation in Westminster. Patronage to be confined to peers and parliament men, but, uh, ah, but, one free all-night visit for each shareholder every year. <laughs> item, item, the importation of a new and wonderful American fruit, which not only nourishes, but intoxicates without ill effect, oh. soon to be obtainable at the Black Bull. <laughs> item, various great bridges, which thanks to a new method of construction in our patent, will unite Kent with Essex and Hampshire with the Isle of Wight within a few years. The Channel Bridge. Ah, no, hush up. Let's walk before we run, yeah. eh? Yeah. So you see, my friends, Universal Improvements is determined to live up to his grandiose name, to bring you the pleasures and the profits that science can now achieve. And so you see that whatever minuscule risk may be said to be involved, it is spread over so wide an area that it is thin to the point of invisibility. Mr. Chairman. Hey, you, 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 you have forgotten the mountain, Thomas. Um, I felt it, it would be premature. What uh, mountain, sir? Well, we don't want to buy a mountain. Well, I, I do think the good investors should know of the mountain after I all. I feel we must be quite open and frank on all matters. The mountain, I believe, is company property. Oh, it is indeed, sir. Yes, it is a mountain. Yes, it is a The mountain. It is called Barharzi. Its existence is known only to a small religious sect of East Indians and to the directors of this company. Barharzi lies three miles from the East Indian coast in tranquil waters. For Barharzi is an underwater mountain. Its peak, its peak rises to a depth of two fathoms from the surface. It is a depth easily attainable by our trained and equipped sea divers. But Harsi, an underwater mountain ten times the size of St. Paul's. An underwater mountain of solid gold. Gold! Oh. Gold! 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 Oh. Gold! <laughs> we will now begin the first issue of shares. Form a line, please. Form a line! The minimum purchase will be a one shilling share. What's the most we can buy? Um, in this instance, Mr. Gudgeon, shall we say 50 pounds worth? Yeah. Oh, one time now, come on, take it. One time. I have three sons and five young sons. And which do you say does best, sir? One is a soldier, and one is a king, and the third's a bold investor. There's loot for the soldier, horse for the pimp, before their body is fester. But there's minus nothing at ten percent for the damn full bold. Investor. Oh, charity, sir. Charity for an old soldier. Hey, you're in luck, General. You find me in a buoyant mood. Here. Here's a shilling. Now, don't spend it on gin. Gin, sir? My. I'll use it to buy me a share in universal improvements. Such innocence. 
Why, by now, it would cost him half a guinea to buy one shilling share in Universal Improvements Limited. I'll take it then. Mrs. Gray! Mrs. Gray! Bone and great bristle, Lucy. Then you better give me more to keep house for you. I can't afford that. Look, I'm a tailor, not a bishop. Oh, what a grand investor. Then you'll get naught but scrag and trotters. I know you've money hidden away. Yeah. Here's a guinea for you, hussy. Out of the shop. I have a mountain of coats to sew. And I'll soon have a rock from the underwater mountain of gold. For this will buy me a share in Universal Improvements. Oh, you're an exquisite all, you say. Most inventive. Thanks for the testimonial, <laughs> sir. But where's your appreciation? Oh, oh, oh. Two golden guineas. How's that there, my little Lucy? How's that? <laughs> Behind the time, sir. I hear that men of fashion reward their ladies nowadays with stock in universal improvements. <laughs> South Seas is very well, but we must have new investments, huh? Who does good? If I may recommend this company, Your Majesty. Fort Seas? An underwater mounting of gold? Oh, that is good. Only Warsaw improvements. Yo! Where the hell's Mackenzie? Oh, yeah, this temporary drops a uh, reflection of the trouble at South Sea stock, but uh, it, it, it's mere politics. I'm not <laughs> selling. They ain't stolen our mountain. It'll go up again, won't it? You won't with the mountain at all. Of course it'll go up. Mountain or no mountain. Is it another missing? Yeah. 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 Uh, end of uh, business for tonight, sir. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, good night, sir. Good night. Uh, tomorrow, we will declare a dividend for all stockholders. Yes. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. It's bad, friends. Celsius stock is plunging. It's dragging the rest of the market down with it. We'll all go down. Uh, confidence, Grape. That's the business we're in. We must show confidence or we're all lost. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't we have no our own chairs, you know, furtive like? <laughs> uh, that Mrs. Tuttle would be tatamount to high trees now. Mr. Stay! <laughs> Sold all their stock and resigned the board. Mm. At 50, we'll read 30 tomorrow. A box on both the bastards. Never trust a respectable man. Come on, we'll just have the smallest amount of money. Where the 
Why blazes have you been, Mackenzie? Have you I... been away two days, sir? Where's your duty to I've universal? Been... Oh, I've, I've, I've been scheming. Oh, great new schemes for universal. Oh, schemes? Oh, great affairs in hand. <laughs> oh, no, no. A canal across the desert. Oh, no. Yeah. no. A coach propelled by slaves. Yeah. Coach propelled by steam. Yeah. 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 And, oh, oh, a new liqueur distilled from stinging nettles. Oh, good strong stuff. Sk I, skirts of glass for the lady. <laughs> the importation of a genuine Chinese dragon. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, well. We all pick each other's pockets. See, where we all stand in a circle and pick, 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 pick. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, let's, let's, oh, no, 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 Dolly, no. Let's drown half an hour in whiskey. The market's collapsing, sir! And it rose again on the third day. Tom, he was a piper's son. He learned to play when he was young. And all the tune that he could play was over the hills and far away. Over the hills and the great way off. And the wind sure blow his top knot off. Oh, hello, Jack. He's been selling his shares in Universal. Oh. All over town. Tanner! Here it is, Jack. Stoom! Markets! Oh, no, that's... Let's take a whiskey, uh, Jack, eh? I'll see you gibbeted first. Come on, Jack. Oh, oh, oh. A registered company, sir. With limited liability. <laughs> Where can I find Mr. Tom Mackenzie? Uh, ah. Over there, sir. Uh, the heap on the floor. Mr. Mackenzie, will you accompany us? It's worth a guinea to know where you're taking me. Sorry, sir. We're not allowed to accept gratuities. No, there's a thing. But we're driving to Richmond Park. Mr. Robert Walpole, leader of the Whigs, would like a word with you. <laughs> Mackenzie. Aye, sir. Robert Walpole. Oh. I've been watching you from a distance. I'd like your help. My help, I... As you know, the market's crashed. Bankers absconding. Financiers cutting their throats. Great families destitute. Endless scandal. Uh it seems I shall be called to clear up the mess and save as many reputations as possible. Oh, tracks to be covered up, eh? <laughs> I hear the king's own family is involved. And the royal mistresses, yes. Several of the king's ministers, yes. But we both sold at the peak of the market, didn't we, Mackenzie? We did, sir. <laughs> 
Well, then, to the point. If you can use a salary, I can use your brains. A government job behind the scenes, sweeping up the rubble of the crash, making good the damage, protecting the blameless and the almost blameless. You take my drift? Aye. And I'll take your job, Mr. Walpole. <laughs> Well, I'll back to the Beagles. We'll talk later. An underwater mountain of gold, eh? <laughs> Respectable people agree, sir. Corruption's a terrible thing. And a conference trickster like me, sir, should be taken to Tyburn this way. By all of the rules I could mention, the noose should have ended my plan. But now I've an income and pension. For I am a government man. For you, it is hard to envision a liar employed by the state unless you make ample provision for our relative distance in date. Your statesmen don't base a career, sir, on profits from fraudulent crime. But yours is the honesty, Ra. Corruption was life in my time. <laughs>